He's doing um, a draw with the biometrics data, with the scan of the environment, with all those little um, tools of nature to speak about this relationship um, between humans and nature. We are here on the roof of Paris and we are very pleased to welcome Jeanne Morel. Jeanne Morel, hello. You are a dancer that thinks and a thinker that dances. You studied philosophy, you studied dance and many other fields related to human sciences. Jeanne, you are notably known for dancing into extreme places and since 2014 you've been developing uh, very interesting projects with your partner, which is Paul Marlier, who is an architect and a designer. He also has a, a very interesting background since he uh, was interested the, into biomimetics, generative heart and augmented uh, mankind. Emmanuel Kant said that we don't see the world how it is, we see the world as we are. So we'd like to know how you see things, Jeanne. First, I would like to say that I see the world as an extraordinary terrain, extraordinary in its fragility and its beauty. I see all world as a temple, a temple to be protected. Jeanne, why do you go dancing into such extreme places and atypical uh, places? It has always been necessary for us to confront ourselves to something bigger than us and to go to this nature, which is, as I said before, a temple. We need to go to this shelter, to find this, this loneliness. Paul um, has always been a diver and a sailor and I have um, done mountaineering forever. And I have to go there and to feel this strength and this fragility and to confront my fragility as a human being and this fragility of nature. Could you also speak about your creative process? We normally go to, um, to high mountains or under the sea to the volcanoes, but also in weightlessness. We are working with astronauts and space agencies since 2016. And after this moment of uh, quiet trance, um, Paul Marlier is doing um, a draw with the biometrics data, with the scan of the environment, with all those little um, tools of nature and of human body and is creating paintings and immersive art, generative art, to, to speak about this relationship um, between humans and nature. So now we clearly see how you use innovation for culture, how you use innovation and culture to make artistic performance, new kinds of uh, uh, artworks, but what about social impact? What is your message to the world? What do you want to say to people that uh, watch your performances? If we walk in the space domain, it's precisely for one thing, is to show this quest and not this conquest. Um, this quest of our human cohesion in this great universal ballet. There is no first dancer here. We are all um, a part of this ballet and we are using this universal sky, this space field to walk with children, with teenagers, but also with people with disabilities, um, to make a print of all humanity. We are also very curious about your past projects that you developed in the past years, since 2014, if I don't mistaken, uh, with Paul Marlier. Could you tell us about this, please? So as I said before, we are walking in weightlessness in under the sea in high mountains and we have done a lot of uh, video and um, immersive artwork with this data. We have also created two performance operas, uh, Abyss and Témoignage Futur, uh, who are showing the civilization uh, to another way, maybe a future civilization. And we have created also uh, artworks with uh, people with disabilities uh, to give them the chance to draw their own dance even if 
they can't dance. So this is very interesting. And let's speak about the future now. Which project are you currently working on? We are creating now um, a full dome artwork, an immersive artwork at Cité des Sciences et de l'Industrie in Paris with all the data we have captured in microgravity. Um, and we want to invite people to this journey to give this lightness, this necessary lightness of being to everybody. And we are also creating an exhibition of these uh, artworks and several performances um, in different terrains and in the North Pole. We work as little archaeologists of the future, perhaps. Um, we want to capture the trace, the essence of this environment, and to give its print, maybe to show the antimatter. Jean, help us to know you better and tell us what you think when you hear these words. Even if it's a synonym of permeable, uh, for me, it's maybe the total opposite. It's um, that allows the light to pass through. In physics, porosity is the set of voids into a solid material. Um, and I think it's necessary to slip into this void, to feel the sweetness of emptiness in our life, the possibility of weightlessness. Antimatter is a mirror form of matter, and if it is, it's another possibility, another present reality. Um, it's more um, feeling that seeing. It's magic, and magic is extremely important in my life and in our work with Paul Marlier. Um, if there is no given limit, there is no um, desire to explore beyond it. I'm a great admirer of Albert Camus and of certain writings of Jean-Paul Sartre. Um, and I see a real freedom in contingency, a liberty, more freedom than anxiety. Um, this is the freedom to be and to be responsible of it. If nothing is brightened, we can draw a life and be responsible of it. In physics, it's the uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Um, the fact that we don't know everything, the affirmation of what we do not know. And uh, it's the necessary um, way to go into reflection and into creation for me. Entropy, uh, if I had to give only one word, I would like to say transformation, the absolute transformation, but also modernism maybe. Um, the fact of always discovering energy, even where we did not suspect it. For me, it's to remain two to become one. Um, it's the opposite of duality. And as porosity, I think it's a multiplication and not a subtraction. And maybe it's exactly what I do with Paul Marlier. We are mixing um, arts, way of thinking, dance and digital art, philosophy and um, generative creation, science and literature, for example, and it's to create a new one. With Paul, um, we are the two Paul, maybe, of the same world. He is the hidden artist, the scientist, uh, drawing his new hieroglyphs, and I am the wind, the body which makes this uh, language alive. I recently heard this sentence. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know uh, who's the author. And here is the sentence. I would like to know what you think about it. The future is hard to predict, 
because the past can't stop changing. What does that inspire you? The past is constantly evolving, but our footprints are there and nothing happens until something moves, as Albert Einstein said. So this dance between past and future is important. Thank you for following this uh, incredible interview with Jean Morel from the roof of Paris. Uh, we wish you a very happy Museum Week. Enjoy! <laughs>